Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Slash Tracks News, the show where your hosts are not wearing any clothes beneath what you can see right here. Uh, we got plenty of stuff to talk about tonight. Half nude, what do we got? Well, the half nude thing is news to me, but then I look down and I, damn, you're right. <laughs> I'm naked. <laughs> crazy. It's crazy that we wore the same thing to the show tonight. Just something on the top and oh, nothing no. on the bottom. It's embarrassing. It is embarrassing. I have dreams like that. You show up to a, a big meeting or something, and you're both wearing, you know, the same shit. So, <laughs> who, who knew that we both were going to wear our birthday suits tonight? But the episode is here, and be that as it may, the show must go on. Yeah, breaking news for you. Breaking news that's at least a week old at this point. Yeah, we, got a, lot of, we got a lot of breaking news. Uh, but don't worry about that. News on Slash Tracks is evergreen. You could watch this episode two years from now and you'd feel like it was brand new. <laughs> if there's a world in two years, because as we stated on the Twitter slash tracks news alert, a Japanese demon vase thing was broken that was housing like a 10,000 year old demon. It's loose. It's been loosed upon the earth. So The Cenobites have actually officially been released. There's going to be a Cenobite with a CD player on its head shooting discs at our asses pretty soon here. I thought I saw the demon on TV the other day saying, I think what he's doing is genius, okay? But yeah, <laughs> That was a record. Hey, that was a record for you tonight. You get like you got a Trump diss and reference in to the show less than one and a half minutes into the show. That's incredible for you. But you're slash the, tracks record. I, I'm the I'm the bouncing off guy. You got the news. What do we got? What do All we right. got? Let's, be that as it may. Cenobites are now invading the Earth, and we also, uh, if you follow us on Twitter, you also saw that, uh, I guess, spiders are now pe- going to be parachuting uh, onto the United States soil, and they're going to take over, and they're the size of hands. So, shit's really hitting the fan, man. It, it's late. Uh, they, they were actually supposed to be deployed last year uh, uh, to take a killer thing, but... Uh... You know, red tape and all. They're just it's now a, coming into it. The It sounds like a bad uh, Discovery Channel movie. Murder Hornets versus parachuting spiders. Parachuting giant spiders from the planet Mars. <laughs> oh, my God. That year, man, that whole year, Murder Hornets was just icing on the cake. Whatever happened to Murder Hornets? Did they just show up and be like, fuck this, leave? <laughs> nothing. Um... Ian Ziering, the guy who's in the star of uh, oh, Shark, what is it, Sharknado? Him and Tara Reid are like, oh man, can the Murder Hornets please actually do something? We could really use another, you know, spinoff or a series or something. Because the Sharknado fad is kind of over, so they need Murder Hornets or the parachuting spiders to take off, I think. They missed the perfect thing for the final Sharknado movie. It should have been called Sharknado 6, Jurassic Swirled. Fallen franchise, and it would have just taken, you know, they would have traveled through time, had like the dinosaur mosasaurs and stuff getting caught in the Sharknado. Would have been perfect, dude. They, they really, they really messed it with that one. Based on the quality of the last like three or four Jurassic Park movies, I thought they were being produced by Discovery Channel. Oh, we terrible. Disagree on that. We disagree on that. The new trailer. Have you seen the trailer for Jurassic World Dominion? They brought back the OGs. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that was pretty badass. That was that was a good feeling. And, yeah, good, uh, <laughs> good. I know, hopefully they didn't write it on a cocktail napkin at happy hour this time. Hopefully it's that's actually that's a full fleshed three. out story. That's how Jurassic Park three was written, like as they were filming it uh, back back in uh, two thousand and one. <laughs> uh, I couldn't tell. <laughs> they got the dream child treatment then, huh? Nightmare on Elm Street five, where they're like. They're, they're, they would show up to the set to, like, film scenes that weren't even written yet. The actors would just have blank pages in their script. I will, I will, I do know this much about Jurassic World Dominion, that uh, Sam Neill, Jeff Goldblum, Laura Dern, they are main characters in the movie. They're not just getting little cameos or whatever, <clears throat> playing a Good. big part of the story. And they're going to have a Gigantosaurus in the film. It's gonna like so here, here. Here's what I know before we get into all the the breaking news that people are tuning in for. The there's gonna be a blood feud in Dominion 
that that the plot doesn't matter because this is what it's about. It's it's a sixty five billion year feud. In the beginning of the movie, a T Rex and a, a Gigantosaurus are going to have a fight back sixty five billion years ago. Even though they wouldn't have been in the same fucking area, you know, it's movies, so whatever. And the T-Rex is going to get killed. A mosquito is going to land on both dinosaurs, and it's going to cut to the future. And we find out that the Gigantosaurus and the T-Rex in the movie are the clones of the ones that fought back then. So they're going to get a rematch at some point in the uh, in Jurassic World Dominion. It's going to be like, oh, it's you. Uh, so that's what they're going for. I heard that <laughs> they... <laughs> I heard something similar to that. I actually heard that the T-Rex went back in time to stop his son, the son T-Rex, from accepting the sports almanac from the Giga Gontosaurus' uh, <laughs> grandson. Uh, and they met at the Cafe 80s. But the T-Rex accidentally brings the sports almanac back to the year 1985. But then the Giga Gontosaurus gets his hands on the almanac and basically becomes a Donald Trump dinosaur. <laughs> Takes over the world. Yeah, you know, and he found it in a sack uh, with uh, Don from Third Rock from the Sun shaving can. Mm-hmm. Shaving cream, you know. Yeah. That's going to play a plot point in this movie, by the way. Yeah. Uh, the, shaving, the shaving can from the first movie. It, it sounds like it's all. It's going to be a nostalgia trip. All, all, in all seriousness, I, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, seeing Sam and Jeff back uh, back at it. Uh, I, the trailer's awesome. If you haven't watched it, you should definitely check out the trailer. You're it's excited really cool. for Jurassic Park 11, but you shit all over Scream 5. Yes, because Jurassic World Dominion makes sense. They've set up the story. Scream 5, it's like, why hasn't Sydney just snapped yet or taking her own life or something. I mean, no matter what she does, crazy people want to kill her every few years uh, <laughs> just because the company wants to make a little money. Well, hold on. Have you still not seen Scream 5? No. Okay, no. Sydney's not even... Sydney's not even really the main character of the film. She's Okay, so there's nobody trying to kill Sydney in the movie. I mean, they, she's... She shows up, spoiler alert, but she's not the main focus of the film. And she does, she doesn't snap, but she's just over this shit. She's okay. like, she's like, listen, she has a handgun and, <clears throat> you know, she's confronting Ghostface. And one of the ghost, you know, Ghostface is hiding behind one of the doors that are locked. And she's basically going to each door calmly with her handgun. And she's like, okay, here's the deal. If you're in here, come out. If you're not, I'm going to shoot through the door until I hit you or you come out. Like, she's completely different. She's totally knows what she's doing. It's like a SWAT. She's like a SWAT team member in this movie. <laughs> but then Dewey, who should have more, so much more experience and know better than to walk up to a ghost face killer that he thinks is dead, does the exact opposite of what he should have known to do and gets brutally gutted. He didn't... Kill. He didn't... Okay, first of all, that ghost face was like supposed to be dead because Dewey kicked the shit out of Ghostface and shot Ghostface center mast. Okay. Uh -huh. So then Dewey goes back spoiler alert, so don't you know we're I'm just I'm I'm revealing all the magician's secrets of Scream Five right now. So if you haven't seen it, sorry. Uh we'll post a spoiler alert on the description of the video so you don't get effed over if you haven't seen it. But so Dewey gets in the elevator or wherever after he supposedly killed Ghostface and he's like, you know what? They always come back. I need to go shoot it in the head. So he goes back to shoot Ghostface in the head, and that's when he gets gutted. <laughs> yeah. that, that's what I want to see. It. I just don't want to see Dewey die. I'm single. He was my Dude, favorite character. He even yeah. has, like, he's he's got some hero shots in that. Like, he's, uh, everybody knows, uh, not every, maybe not everybody knows, but David Arquette's got a professional wrestling background, and mm -hmm. he whips out some seriously cool moves on Ghostface. Like, he's doing reversals and doing, like, some crazy stuff. Dewey's a badass. Have you seen his documentary about trying to redeem himself in wrestling? Yeah, yeah I did. Um, when he, when uh, he got Perry was uh, when he got cut with that light tube, he like basically was bleeding out. He almost died in real life. He, he finished the match too. Mm -hmm. He got in there and finished the match. I mean, not a lot of wrestlers would do that. So. 
Luke Perry is the one that rushed him to the hospital in that scene. Uh, a lot of people don't don't realize that, but that's who was in the car with him. They were. The did they become best friends on the set of Buffy, the Vampire Slayer, of the movie? Probably. Probably. He's all. He's all. Come on, Pike. Let me in, man. Let me in. <laughs> Benny, you're floating. <laughs> You're floating, Benny. <laughs> I'm not letting you in. Why can't, real news, why can't real news just be like this, you know? Uh, where we just talk about <laughs> spoilers for horror movies that just got released? <laughs> All right. Is the food that you're eating for dinner killing you? Find out tonight at 11. <laughs> what? 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 Have you seen Scream 5? If you have... Tune in to Slash Tracks. If you haven't, we're going to spoil the shit out, of, shit out of it more at 11. All right. Let's get into some fun facts. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's... All right. First fun fact of uh, episode number three of Slash Tracks News. The mouth of a jellyfish also is its anus. I know some people like that. So and that's totally believable. Yeah, he's like... Man, that jellyfish is just talking shit. It's always talking shit, just running its mouth. I hate that jellyfish. They're all like that. Uh, yeah, so like, jellyfish's like mouth is just ass. Sir. So the terminology, like, you know, a politician being like, does your ass ever get jealous of all the bullshit that comes out of your mouth? Uh, you couldn't use that on a jellyfish because... It's, yeah, it's factual. It's, it's, uh, it's, factual. it's science at that point. It's not funny. It's just, it is what it is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a pretty. That's that's interesting. Okay, I, I feel bad for jellyfish. <laughs> that that's bad for a jellyfish, and I feel bad for a jellyfish because brushing your teeth at that point is just a futile effort. You know what I mean? It's like pointless. It's like, man, my teeth are looking pretty good. I don't even know if jellyfish have teeth. I don't think they do. But if they did, they're brushing their teeth, and like ten seconds later, they're shitting through their freshly, you know, their crest smile. All yeah, that reminds me of is South Park. I wish I could put a clip of the scene there, but like Paramount's all over copyright. Uh, <laughs> the episode where people in town are putting food up their butt and then pooping out their mouth because it's healthier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where they're like, Randy Marsh is like setting down on top of a Subway sandwich. They got that from Jellyfish. So, um, speaking of, <laughs> speaking of crazy fun facts, like people eating through their asshole, um, cannabinoids, the active ingredient in cannabis, which is, you know, found in marijuana, these cannabinoids are naturally present in human breast milk. Okay. So that explains why my kids are so, were so strange when they were, when they were babies. They were just they high were as hell. Eating, yeah. they, they were always eating all my Cheetos. <laughs> and they were just gone. So. Cop, cop pulls us over and we're super high. And he's like, Josh, Alex, I got two questions for you. Number one, you've been smoking weed. Or number two, you've been drinking the breast milk. What are you doing? doing? Which one are you up to? Huh? One or the other? Give me, give me a filled, give me a filled uh, sobriety test on that one. Officer, I swear to God, I haven't been smoked any weed. I've just been motorboating bitches all day long. I'm sorry. I've only had two nipples, yeah. I swear. I motorboated two girls at the stroke club. I apologize. My bad, dog. Uh, speaking no of... Sir, off, no, sir, Mr. Nipples. I haven't sucked on any officers all night. <laughs> Speak, speaking of uh, drugs, let's uh, get into another fun fact. Heroin was originally marketed as a children's cough medicine in the early 1900s. Yeah, they had it they had it figured out back then, man. You know, forget forget all the ADD medicine and everything. Get your kids really dependent on you. Dude. They like Mama, I'll do the dishes, I swear. Uh, just 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 give me a little more cough medicine, please. <laughs> that, that kid please. that kid <laughs> like doesn't want to do anything besides drink cough medicine. He's been chasing the dragon all day long, man. That's that's horrible. You know, heroin is like one of the most addictive substances in the world. Like, it's not good at all. And these poor children are being introduced to it in the nineteen hundred. That's crazy. That is a yeah, horrible fun fact. That's not that's not a fun fact. That's a sad fact. 
all these people that say, back in my day, kids did what their parents said. It's, yeah, because they wanted their next fix. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If they do what they said, then they're going to be, you know, going cold turkey. Kids kids were pretending to be sick to, to get out of school, and then some kids were pretending to be sick to just be loaded. <laughs> I gotta get. I gotta get out of this class. I gotta get home. I gotta have the cough syrup. I gotta. I gotta relax. Was the cough syrup served on a spoon, or I don't know. Did you have? Yeah, I don't know, man. Like the Cookie Monster on Family Guy, where he's got a <laughs> some cookie batter on a spoon and he's lighting it. He's got his arm tied off. He's like it's baking cookies in the back. Um, here's another fun fact. This is a great segue, by the way, from heroin use to uh, the Incas measured their units of time. By the amount of time it took to boil a potato. Is that not how it's supposed to be done? That's how I've always done it. You, you talk to your kids and you're like, do you realize how many potatoes that I've cooked? Uh, you know you know how many po boiled potatoes you're late? <laughs> yeah, I've said that to them and they're like, Dad, don't, tr don't, don't make me think right now. I'm so, I'm just, I'm just so down from that cough syrup. They're like, we're actually not late because we know you've been cooking potatoes in the microwave lately, Dad. <laughs> it takes way less time. Did you poke holes in it with a fork, Dad? Or we did you just put started, it in there raw? We started recording at like 28 potatoes. <laughs> when, I was, when I was a kid, I used to measure units of time by like how many episodes like a TV show would take. So I'd be like, that's an hour. Like, I've got an hour to before I go do something. And it's like, that's like two and a half episodes of DuckTales, or that's like, you know, one episode of Nick News, <laughs> you know, whatever, whether that was like an hour, or two Cosby episodes. So, you know, I would always, it was always TV shows, measurement of time for me as a kid. What about you? Fun fact, the only Cosby episode I remember uh, from back then is the one where Bill Cosby gives birth to a giant Subway sandwich. That's <laughs> it. That's all I remember. Well, knowing what we know now about Bill Cosby, they should have taken that sandwich and made him eat it up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bill Cosby, I saw this thing where on Twitter where they're like, oh, Bill Cosby's free. You know, justice has prevailed. And then somebody was like, just because he was released because the statute of limitations on the case where he was, you know, proven guilty on uh, doesn't mean that he's innocent or that that's not justice. I don't understand. And then I think Cosby was actually tweeting stuff that like he was going to be doing a show or something was like totally tone deaf about the situation that people hate him now. Is he doing like a people at the nursing home say the darndest things or something? Isn't he like 90? He he's really old man. And he's, probably one of the most hated men in America and he's still just the saddest part about that whole Cosby thing other than the just hundreds of rapes that he committed the saddest part about it other than that is, yeah the worst part about the Cosby situation other than the just hundreds and hundreds of rapes he did uh would be the people that were on the Cosby show that made most of their income by residuals from the show that show's basically been pulled. Uh, it was in syndication. So Felicia Rashad, who played his wife, Malcolm Jamal Warner, who played his th son, all these people lost tons of income because Bill Cosby's an asshole. Just a terrible human being. Same thing happened with Roseanne, except they only pulled the newest season that she did before like, the spinoff started, The Connors, which oh, I think she, is a great She must have... Uh, um, well, Roseanne, didn't Roseanne own, like, most of the previous run? Like, wasn't she, like, the producer, the director, the star? Yeah, but, like, seasons one through nine of the original, the original run of Roseanne yeah. is it's available to stream anywhere. But, like, the season 10 that they did in 2018, before she did her tweets, yeah. like, is nowhere to be found. You have to, like, uh, soak today that to get a hold of it. Uh, it's it's just weird. It's weird. It, my point is, it's weird how those those kind of things work with like the Cosby Show, because it's not the rest of the cast's fault. You know, they shouldn't suffer, and that's why I was happy to see that uh, the Connors uh, got picked up, and it's doing really good. I think they're they're on their fourth season right now, going on a fifth without Roseanne. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always thought that that show had a great supporting cast. 
I mean, you got John Goodman. Uh, you got uh, fucking Jackie. Lori Me- Lori Metcalf. Yeah. It just it's just an amazing cast, and I think it, the Connors proves that yeah, Roseanne was Roseanne, but uh, she didn't do it alone. And same with the Cosby Show, you know. So they shouldn't suffer uh, because of because uh, of what he did. Well, it's just absolutely bad timing. I mean, the show was over when all this stuff came out, so they had no chance to like continue the show. I mean, it ended decades before the, all this stuff finally the roof got blown off of. His well, charade and stuff like streaming, and if they get paid for that and everything. Well, so. I with me, I know that sometimes there's an argument on social media where people will be like, "Just because this person, you know, did something in their personal life, doesn't mean that you should stop consuming their content, like their TV shows or their movies." And I see their point. I I, I kind of see it, but at the same time, just as a, a decent human being. Yeah. When the Cosby thing happened, you can ask Nicole. I took the Cosby seasons of DVDs I had and I just threw them in the garbage can. I was yeah, just disgusted. I'm not going to support that. To a certain extent, uh, I can separate art, the, the art from the person, mm-hmm. but not in situations where it's uh, where it's obvious that the person's guilty. That's a totally yeah. different thing. But there is this big thing in Hollywood. I would hate to be super famous. Because it's like it's guilty until proven innocent. And even if you are proven innocent, your career is already ruined. Uh, And that sucks. I mean, celebrities are walking on eggshells. You know, even like the best of the best. uh, People are just looking for reasons uh, nowadays. Oh, I feel so bad. I totally feel bad for those celebrities. Uh, Isn't that just awful, Josh? Like, Like, we can barely sexually assault anyone these days without the roof being blown off of our, you know, charade here. Like, please pass the saying. caviar, Jeeves. Like, I I can't even slap a girl's ass on set anymore without a problem. It's like, shut I can up, tell Josh. People, <laughs> I can tell people right now that Tom Hanks wouldn't take no for an answer one night 20 years ago. And tomorrow... What? Yeah, and tomorrow... I'm, I'm not really saying that happened. Tom, I promised you I wouldn't say anything. But, like, if it did happen, and I said that, that could ruin his career, you know, even though it's completely false. I heard a rumor, like, <laughs> last week that Tom Hanks was, like, part of the, like, part of the, like, the head of the Illuminati. He's, like, the head of the dragon. Like, <laughs> he's, like, the main leader of the, you know, the evil Illuminati, the dragon people. He's a lizard person. They've Tom been, Hanks. They've- They've been. I think you've been drinking too much of that cough syrup. Uh, Nicole, yeah, Nicole needs to slow down the cough syrup on you. Yeah. I wouldn't even be. I wouldn't even showed up on time for the episode tonight. I would have been passed out. There's no way. <clears throat> um, God, my throat. I gotta clear my throat. <clears> throat. That's that sounds great on camera too. By the way, every time I clear my throat. Um, newsy. That's that's what the, we're very professional news. Oh show. yeah, there's no cough button at all. <laughs> we can't afford one. Uh, great news. It's back there somewhere. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Hey, last fun fact of the episode. Hydrogen sulfide, the gas that makes farts smell bad, can actually help prevent heart attacks, strokes, cancer, and dementia. Okay. So those people like that are those like supermodels that are selling like their Jarred farts and bag farts on eBay and stuff. They're saving the world. Well, in a, in a, if you have insurance, yes, because you'd have to have a pharmacist fill the prescription first. So they'd have to have the supermodel in the back. You know, when the pharmacist is you know back there and he's going to fill your prescription, you'd have to have a doctor write it out. And then, like Victoria Silverstedt would fart into the the jar, the mason jar, and then the pharmacist would seal it up. Oh, yeah, and just just so people know, this is not a joke. It is a real thing. There are like, like supermodels selling their farts in jars. That's a that's a true story. You can goggle it. Uh, get on there and goggle it. Oh my God! This man has this man has had a heart attack. Back, get out of the way! Don't worry about it. I'll take care of this. Why are you taking your pants down? I think it's obvious. I'm gonna fart in his mouth. We're gonna save this man. Now get out of the way. 
I need I need three cc's of popcorn farts stacked. <laughs> so hey, I need some popcorn. I need some talk uh, number seven from Taco Bell, and I need asparagus ASAP. Ten baked potatoes to go. <laughs> I need those baked potatoes loaded. We're trying to save this man. Open his mouth wider. I need. What do I? Someone get a funnel. And if there's no funnels, get one of those things you pour you pour straight into to put oil in your engine. <laughs> the hell is funnel? that called? Yeah, a funnel. Get a funnel. <laughs> get a funnel. Oh, I'll, it, we don't know what a funnel is? Okay, I'll describe a funnel. <laughs> All right, Josh. Hit the breaking news sports button, buddy. Well, first, we have a Slash Tracks News mega update. Really? Uh, we've been kind of talking about each episode. The length is getting even longer. So we're about down to shoulder length at this point. Yeah. So uh, just that's been a slash tracks Josh's hair update. Okay. Well, hey, and I'm glad you brought it up because you're almost at the ultimate cosplay uh, persona for you. You could almost be Roddy Roddy Piper from WrestleMania 8 with that hair right now. Let's do Never it. throw rocks Let's... at a man with a machine gun. Dude, he had the best lines. He had the best lines. Once they have all the answers, I change all the questions. Roddy Roddy Piper, what? man. The star. The star of uh, Pro Wrestlers vs. Zombies, which, by the way, is our most viewed episode of Slash Tracks. Uh, going on 1,200 views now, almost. Yeah, that, that that's... A... Who knew? I thought it would be Carnosaur 3 that would top the charts. Yeah, me too. I was thinking that one or Monster Monster Brawl for sure. <laughs> who knew that who knew that Monster Brawl uh just was not the the one that people wanted to see. Swamp Thing is also uh, a slash track certified shitter. Uh well, that was supposed to be Swamp Thing too. Yeah. Well I was told by a lot of people afterwards that was my fuck up. That was my fuck up. Master I, Evil's fuck up. One of the ones that is actually pretty damn good that I didn't see coming was uh, Child's Play 3 is very popular, but it's Chucky. I, sh- I guess I should have saw it coming. Halloween uh, Resurrection did great, and uh, already Freddy's Revenge is outperforming Hellraiser Revelations. So, yeah, and Leprechaun in Space is coming out soon. That's going to be that's going to be a that's going to be an episode for sure. Yeah, and we, we are going to revisit Michael Myers again. Yes, in the curse of Michael Myers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we've got and some good shit. In that one? We've got some good shit coming, lass. What do we got after that? Uh, what do we have after that, Josh? I believe that you asked Master Evil. If we oh, watch- yes. Yes, Waxwork. Waxworks. One of the most, like, Waxworks to me is somebody actually even said it on the YouTube channel for uh, Slash Tracks uh, with the 80 Slasher Librarian. So if you haven't subscribed, go subscribe right now. But one of the one of the uh, people that uh, subscribed to the channel actually said that Waxworks is a guilty pleasure. And it is a guilty pleasure. I actually enjoy that movie. Um, that movie has one of those scenes in it, though, that just disturbs me to my core. It's just like the Return of the Living Dead Part 2 scene where the girlfriend lets the boyfriend eat her brains. Yeah. The scene where she's getting whipped basically to death in the in the you know exhibit in the museum or whatever. The waxworks where she's just getting whipped and just loves it. We're gonna That's, have fun with that one. Dude, that scene know. bothers me. I, I don't like that scene. <laughs> Did you see the comment that said that our show is the best homage to Mystery Science Theater? Or three thousand that the viewer had ever seen. I did see uh, that, and he, he must have just been slamming cough syrup all night long when he, before he wrote that comment. I don't know, no, know how many baked potatoes it took him, how many episodes he watched, you know, <laughs> how many potatoes went by. But uh, he, he, he's. I appreciate the comment, you know. That, that was a good comment, um, and I think that the episodes get better and better the less we talk about getting your dick wet. <laughs> <laughs> or dirty strippers. Yeah, uh, I think the, that the Pinhead Two won the the poll to be ripped at some point, and I wanted to ask if it if, if it was lost on you the title of Pumpkinhead Two, which is Pumpkinhead Two Blood Wings. 
Yeah. What are you, know, what, you know what? You know what blood wings are, right? Like a like a like a maxi pad. It's 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 something you earn by doing a certain thing during a oh, certain time. Oh yes, in the month. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. the title of the damn movie. So <laughs> that's the name of the movie. Blood wings. Yes. Uh, I thought it was pumpkin head two electric boogaloo. Oh no 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 no! It's it's. That was uh, that was the remake of Pumpkinhead Part Two. He becomes a break dancer. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't want to kill people anymore. He wants to like, you know, entertain people. <laughs> they they did the same thing with Return of the Living Dead on Sci Fi with like when they did four and five back to back. They filmed them back to back. They filmed two Pumpkinhead sequels back to back in like two thousand six and seven. Uh, so there's there's a part three and four that were Sci Fi Channel ones. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure Master Evil at some point is going to have those on the list. Um, well, with the Turn the Living Dead 4 and 5. How did uh, Corey Feldman not get attached to at least one of those? <laughs> Dude, I hope. I hope Master Evil never picks uh, the Return of the Living Dead Grave to the Grave and whatever the other one is because I might fall asleep during those. You you probably won't fall asleep during those movies because aren't they like 57 minutes long? Those movies yeah. are short. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're like a... They're, so, when you... Dude, Return of the Living Dead Part 5. Uh, you start it, get your popcorn, get everything ready. By the time you're settled in, the movie's over. It's like an extended music video. <laughs> it's like you get to eat enough popcorn long. to save a life afterwards? Yeah. So at least, if it is a popcorn fart of a movie, at least you'll be saving some lives when you watch it. Exactly. So what's going on in the wonderful world of sports? All right. Got very important sports news. And this is this is actually brand new. This is from yesterday. You need, you need an alternate pers- persona. You know, you go off screen for a second, come back with a different hat or something. You know, it's, I'm Dave McNally with the Slash Track Sports updates. You know, <laughs> slash so Tracks, tra- Slash Track Sports. Where, if you're watching Slash Tracks News, you're definitely a sports fan. <laughs> Dave McNally, who's watching us right now, is like, dude, I should uh, have drank that cough syrup. Wow. Dude. Go ahead. Yeah. It, so, hey, this is evergreen. This is from yesterday. This is brand new. The Indianapolis Colts uh, just traded their starting quarterback, Carson Wentz, to the newly named Washington Commanders, formerly the Washington football team, formerly the Washington Redskins. They just made a trade. The Washington football team, Washington Commanders, uh, their odds of winning the NFC Championship, so their odds of going to the Super Bowl before this trade, Plus 3,000. So that means if you like put a dollar down, you would win 3,000, right? So they make the big trade for a new starting quarterback. And the odds went from plus 3,000 to plus (laughs) 3,000. It didn't change at all. That's how, that's how they view him. He does. He, he didn't help their team at all. Or hurt it. Just, well, They didn't even have a starting quarterback, really, before this. Nothing. Just, he did nothing. Just so you know why this is all lost on me so much, I got into football for, like, two years. Yeah. And you want to know what my favorite team was? Like, my the team I rooted for? The Miami Dolphins. So Dolphins used to be good with Dan Marino? Yeah, it was, it, it was after Dan Marino, but it... Yeah, they okay. really went anywhere. Um, I would say the Dolphins' like claim to fame, their biggest claim to fame in the last 30 years is that uh, they were in Ace Ventura. Exactly. Snowflake, the Dolphin. Yeah. Snowflake. Laces out, Dan. Mr. Winky. Mm-hmm. Uh, sports that would story. Not fly now. That, would, that would not fly now. No, that they would, would never. No. <laughs> this is a man. Finkel is Einhorn. They would never... No, that would, it's too woke nowadays. There's no way it wouldn't make it. Um, ep- or episode number two. Sports <laughs> story number two. So the Super Bowl happened like, I don't know, like a month ago, right? Wake up, Josh. <laughs> yeah, Super Bowl. No, I'm just kidding. All right, Super Bowl in the NFL happened about a month ago. Rams, uh, wide receiver, the Rams won the Super Bowl. They beat the Bengals. Uh, that's, you know, that's old news. But... Rams starting wide receiver Van Jefferson not only won the Super Bowl that Sunday, he also had his baby. Uh, his fa- his wife gave birth to a child for him that same day. 
And one of the people in the stands was actually quoted as saying that they saw, they thought they saw Van Jefferson's wife being like stretchered out of the stadium during the game. Why have I heard something? Why is it, why, I'm getting deja vu here. Wasn't there somebody else that like, had a baby the same day that they won a football game or something? No, there was Max Scherzer of the Washington Nationals, um, like, threw a complete game, one hitter, and struck out, like, 15 batters, and then he made it to the birth of his child the same day. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So I thought I was having, like, a psychic moment. Oh, it's, like, the same like... kind of thing, but okay. that's a good day for Van Jefferson. That You know, dare I say that might go down as the greatest day in his life. He's peaked already. I don't know that it gets better than that. Can I do a sports news update thing since we're in sports? Yeah, go for it. It might even be on your bullet list there. Okay. Because you're the one that sent it to me. And I got to say, I'm excited to see Stone Cold Steve Austin do one more match. Yeah, that is on my rundown. Uh, that is, that, And it wasn't under sports. It was under pro wrestling. But, yeah, that that's sports, sure. Yeah. Stone Very Cold, athletic. Stone Cold Steve Austin. The last match was at WrestleMania 19 at Safeco Field in Seattle, where it's it took rock. three rock bottoms to beat the Texas Rattlesnake and put him into retirement until this week. He's going to be facing KO, Mr. Kevin Owens, uh, and we don't know what the stipulations for the match are yet. We'll probably find out Monday. Um, but Steve Austin on his Twitter and on WWE, you know, social media is all over the place. He accepted the match. So Stone Cold's going to be in a match, guys and girls at WrestleMania. It's going to be like a sanctioned match. It's going to be kind of like when Bret Hart fought Vince McMahon. No, 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 no. Because Stone Cold is... Lloyds of London doesn't cover injured wrestlers and stuff like Stone Cold and Bret Hart. So, I don't know. That's how they worked around the Bret Hart thing with the Lloyds of London insurance. Stone Cold doesn't have the Lloyds of London, though. He never did. He didn't retire because he couldn't physically compete anymore. He retired because he was done. He didn't want to write. He was. He went out that way. So, it's going to be a match, then, in the ring, not he, some... I don't know. Him. Now, that's a good question. I don't know if it's going to be a Texas death match. I don't know if it's going to be a battle royale. I don't know what the hell it's going to be. Or, you know... All I know is that he accepted the match. He can physically have a real match if he wants to. They don't have to do the Hollywood bullshit that Bret Hart did where his family comes in and screws over Vince at the end of the match. That's ridiculous. I pretend like that match never happened, <laughs> to be honest with you. I think it was cool that they gave Bret the United States Championship for a couple weeks there during that 2012 or 10 or whatever it was. Where he beat the Miz. Yeah, you know, he had it. That that was nice. I think, I think that was... Uh, that was very, very nice of Vince to uh, give Brett that. Um, but I, what I really want to see, which we're never going to get to, and I wish Taker had done it before he left. Taker Sting. Taker Sting. I know they probably couldn't do it in the ring, especially after the Goldberg fiasco in Saudi Arabia. But they could have done like a graveyard match like he did with AJ Styles. You know, something like Cinematic that. Cinematic match. Yeah, I think Sting and Taker could do that. Sting's still doing shit in AEW, man. Yes, but Sting's under contract in AEW, and Sting's a... Sting, AEW is basically like the new WCW. Like, I like Sting, it. Sting's going nowhere. Sting's not going back to WWE. They screwed him over in the WWE. Yeah, they brought him in just to bury him. Why did he have to come in to, have, to lose to Triple H? What the hell was the point of that? Yeah, that... That whole thing was that should have ended if if they if if they didn't want Sting going over on Triple H, they should have had like a no contest, you know, and just had the NWO and DX have a big battle or something. Yeah, I was at that WrestleMania live, by the way. Wow, I was. That's the only WrestleMania I've ever been to. It was in uh, Santa Clara. It was in Levi Stadium, where the Forty ers play. Holy shit! Um, I was at that WrestleMania. I was right above the gorilla position in like the nosebleed section, but where we were at in Levi stadium, they have the curtain and where the wrestlers will make their way down the ramp. You could see the wrestlers. Like there was probably like maybe a foot or two feet, you know, in between the curtain and where the wall, you know, the ceiling is. And we're right on top of them. So I could like see the rock bouncing around and stuff before he comes out. I could see it. I could see what he was doing. I could see the NWO like kind of prepping to come out. So, and Hogan walks like 
slow as molasses, and that was the longest ramp I've ever seen in my life almost. It was like a WrestleMania three entrance ramp, except for they didn't have those little wrestling carts to take them down to the, to the, they, to the ring this time. Did they flip a coin to see which side Sean Watman was going to be on? For yeah, that? they're like, you can be in DX or you can be in NWO. You were in both. <laughs> yeah, so which, what's it going to be? They're like, you just come out as one, two, three kid. Get the old. You're not neither. Uh, we'll bring back Spark Plug Holly and uh, and, then, and the New Age Rockers. Oh my uh, God, Leif, uh, Leif Cassidy <laughs> and Marty Jannetty. Uh, yeah, that really happened. Really happened. Um, um. By the way, there's a few of my wrestling matches on the channel. If anybody ever wants a good laugh, uh, they're on there on this channel. Look them up. Search through. You'll find them. Uh, I had a lot of fun wrestling, and I missed it like hell. Uh, check out those matches on his YouTube channel. And also, he's got some other stuff on, on the channel that's really worth uh, taking a look at. Like when he was on Divorce Court. Uh, that's always worth a good look at a baby face Josh having a hard time with a two-timing hoe, hoe bag of a wife, just doing my man dirty. And also, if you want to hear a ghost story that I'm still not sold on, uh, check out The Boatman uh, with, my, with my bestie, Josh LaRue, where he was actually punked before punked was a thing on MTV. <laughs> on, everybody, on everything I love, man. Everything I love and hold dear. Everything I said in that is absolutely true. I believe it. You've never lied to me. I believe you. I, it's not and your there's side. No, there's no way it could have been faked, is what I'm saying. Especially yeah. laughter. I'm gonna have to meet this guy. All right. And did you have any cough syrup that night? I'm sure you did hear laughter. How many baked potatoes did you eat that night? All How right. much gas did you have? You'll you'll have an experience one day, and you're gonna be like, oh shit. Okay. Josh is having delusions. Someone hold him down and fart in his mouth. Hey, stop. He's losing his mind. Hey, uh, let's get into uh, horror news real quick. Horror. horror news. Flash tracks. Horror news. Horror news. Okay. Horror. All right. So I saw on social media, I follow this account. Uh, it's like an old VHS account. And they, they kind of just post unopened VHS stuff that's still in pretty good shape that sells at auction. And uh, we just recently did Freddy's Revenge. It's the most uh, most recent episode of Slash Tracks. Um, yeah. So, Freddy's Revenge, uh, an unopened mint copy, a VHS copy, just sold at auction for $6,304.20. Oh, wait, this just in? Yes, yes. Somebody had way too much money <laughs> on their hands. Um, back to you, Alex. Um I, I think that's really cool. I really do. Uh, that's just like that Mario Brothers 2 co game that sold for like $10,000 because some lady bought it for her like grandkids to play and she just put it in her closet and forgot she had it and then she died and then somebody found it and they like sold it like at an estate sale. It, I mean, it was just perfectly mint. It had never been opened. That's crazy. It's just like that. But I guess if you're buying these types of VHS items for $6,000, you're going to have to frame it, right? You're going you're not playing it. You're not opening it. You're going to frame it, right? I don't know. I got two super rare collectible boxes from High C with Ecto Cooler from a giveaway where mm -hmm. they only gave like 15,000 people tried to win and I made two accounts and got two out of like 100 they gave away and I drank both of them. So, <laughs> I mean, you drank both of you didn't drink you didn't both. save one? No, I drank them both. I love it. You can't take it with you. I'm not a material person. Put, I, I, I can spend $6,000 on something, put it in a case. It's not going to make me happy. I drank that shit. So what so. did you do What you do with the bottles? Did you, did you save them? Oh, yeah, I still got that in the case and everything. And about 40 bags of the Stay Puft marshmallows. So. Okay. All right. Hey, our good friend of the show, Ira Hyden, was the voice of the mini Stay Puft, Mar Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Oh, mini puffs. Yeah, yeah the mini okay. puffs. And don't lest, lest you forget, boys and girls, slashaholics, that Josh and I broke national news with that story, by the way. And yeah, that, when we were getting sidetracked, we interviewed Ira, uh, one of the Dream Warriors, and he divulged to us, gave us the dirt, the scoop, if you will, that he was the voice of the mini Stay Puft Marshmallow Men in the new Ghostbusters. That went viral, son. Bloody disgusting yeah. picked it up. Yeah. How, 
suck on that, guys. Okay, have some cough syrup while you wrap your mind around that one. We break <laughs> news. Hey, Josh, we do break news. We broke <laughs> national news. We did. It, it, it popped up on Bloody Disgusting and like Damn two right uh, horror sites after that. Cinemasker. Because of, it was on Cinemasker. So, yeah. So we, uh, yeah, that was us. So it, in, a, in a way, if they're if people are watching this as news show right now and they're like, oh, what do these guys know about news? Well, fuck that. We break national headlines, news stories that are worthy and go viral. So suck on that. that. Screenshot of that, you know. Yeah. Uh, and if they don't get their heads right... And, and they need they need a little fixing. They need they need to get healthier. They need to be able to think straight. We'll fart in their mouth. Yeah, tomorrow you're going to be reading a headline. Yeah. You know, that popcorn farts are saving lives. And yeah. it wouldn't happen for Alex and Josh. Yeah. I'm sick of this crap. I want some respect. I, I'm turning into Owen Hart from WrestleMania 10 right now. I want. I am not a nugget. <laughs> I want some. I'm sick. I'm sick and tired of my brother Brett. Damn it. Uh. Let's get into some headlines. What do you think? Okay. Headline. Headline. All right. Let's do it. All right. Check this one out, buddy. Last year, okay. last year, Dr. Amanda Hess was in the hospital and about to give birth when she overheard there was another pregnant woman whose baby was in distress. The on-call doctor wasn't at the hospital yet. So Hess, Dr. Hess, who's in labor herself, decides to take matters into her own hands and goes and fixes the situation, give, delivers the baby, right, delivers the other baby, and then proceeds to go back to her emergency room and gives birth to her own baby. Wow. This she happens. Gets, she gets the hero award this week. She, she might. I got one other story that's amazing, too. But that Dr. Hess... Cop? Is it the female cop? No. That, that like, breastfed a starving baby? Okay, because that one was pretty cool, too. Breastfeed. So wait a minute. How is she a hero if she's breastfeeding this baby? There's cannabinoids in that breast milk. She's getting this baby high. She should be arrested. <laughs> she should be arrested. She's not a hero. What the hell's wrong with you? They, they found an abandoned baby that was like very malnutrition, and yeah. while the emergency people were coming, she she uh, got it high uh, with breast yeah. milk. That's ex- so. Thank you for correcting yourself live here because that's ridiculous. Oh, have you heard the story about this hero cop, Alex? Oh, yeah, go ahead and elaborate, Josh. Oh, yeah, well, this lady breastfed this baby. It's like, stop right there. Stop. There's cannabinoids in breast milk. She got this baby high. She should lose her badge. She's gone. She's canceled. Okay? End of story. <laughs> in all right. serious, if you're a hero, thank you. Thank but, yeah, I completely agree. If the breast fe- if the breastfeeding police bandit is watching this uh, episode right now, thank you for your service. Yes. Um. All right. Here's another one. Now, this one, this person might win the Hero of the Night award. Uh, the, Doctor Hess is in the running, but this one could also be another one. The Batman. Yeah, the Batman. No, because that movie is seven hours long, and they can kiss my ass. They never. Whoever was in charge of editing the Batman should be fired <laughs> because I don't believe they did anything. I haven't seen it yet. Dude, so. whoever edited the film or was in charge of editing it should be fired because the movie is nine hours long. It's ridiculous. It's a good movie. It's pretty good. But I can't really concentrate on the plot of a movie or how good a movie is or how bad it is if my ass is asleep halfway through. There's no position I could get. I switched to the left cheek. No good. Switch to the right cheek. No good. I was seriously in hell, dude. Halfway through the movie, my ass was just done. I tapped out. I needed some breast milk and some cough syrup and go night night. The baked potato. You, baked you potato might fart in my mouth. I will say that the greatest movie I saw in 2021 was Ghostbusters Afterlife. So um, I, I liked the, Go- the Ghostbusters movie was very good. I the, the scene where they're riding through town uh, in Egon's granddaughter's, like you know, out to the side of the car with the proton pack. That was awesome. That was that and was the, stuff with, the stuff with the Egon. Was it had that movie? I laughed, I cried. You slammed thousand dollar ecto coolers. You did it all. Two of them. Two. Yeah. I could have. I could have sold those things for a lot of money. But, Dude, we uh, were just about to get sponsored by an ecto cooler, and then you just divulged that you worked them over for an extra one. We're done. There goes the sponsor of the show, Josh. Way to go. Hey, uh, slash Trex News. Uh, Crystal Pepsi's coming back this summer in regular Is form it? and in and in zero sugar form. It's not. It was leaked, yeah. like a 
poster of their upcoming stuff from one of their board meeting things leaked. Uh, there's going to be Flaming Hot Mountain Dew coming out this year. And uh, Crystal Pepsi and Crystal Pepsi Zero. So well, yeah. you, sold, you sold me a Crystal Clear Pepsi because when I was a kid, I just loved getting out of my basketball games when I was like in third or fourth grade because we'd go immediately to the convenience store and get like one or two of those things. I loved them. Yeah, I do too. Every time they bring them back, I, I buy like a hundred of them. Yeah, they're Crystal Clear Pepsi. People talk crap about it all the time, but I think it's delicious. I also miss Blue Pepsi. Blue Pepsi's great too. They had that just last summer. Like I had, I, I think I still got a bottle in my fridge somewhere. I have for real? Left, like, yeah, I started drinking it and it just wasn't for me. Damn. Um, well, speaking of like heroes by, for them bringing crystal clear Pepsi back, they're heroes. Uh, but here's another hero. Okay. An 11 year old girl with down syndrome was bullied at her school in North Macedonia after parents of other students openly complained about her being in the same class as their children. Wow. So check this and listen to this. This is, this is crazy. The very next week, the president of Macedonia himself escorted the young girl to her classroom. The very next week, the very next Monday, he, there's a photo of him holding her hand, escorting her to the classroom. The president himself. I, I, that, that's amazing. Yeah. Like, he might be the hero of the episode. I, I just thought that was it's a really great image if you guys have a chance. Look up Macedonian president escorts, you know, dot, you know, girl to class or whatever. It's really cool. Like, makes a huge statement too, to the country. Like, you know, to how people should behave, how people should be treated. Yeah, it. You know, it's kind of like our current president. Um, there's a video of him after all the all the stuff that the LGBTQ and trans community went through in over the past uh, few years. Him coming out and actually saying, "I'm with you. I stand with you." You know, I thought that was a great statement, and uh, it's it's time that we get back. Uh, hate is not good. It's not acceptable. You don't have permission uh, to go out and just be hateful and spiteful. You need to love each other and be excellent to each other, and uh, that was a great story, Alex. I appreciate that. I, I think that... I think I, I love that people are so different from one another because I think variety is the spice of life. I think if everybody was the same... Life would be so boring. I mean, honestly, it would just be so boring. You're not supposed to be the same as other people. You need to be, you need to be a peacock. You need to let your feathers, whatever you are, let your own it. fly. Yeah, let it own it. If you, whatever you are, like the most. I'm a weirdo. So <laughs> much. One of the weirdest people you'll ever meet. If yeah. You get to... yeah. Give me a chance. If you hate me now, wait till you get to know me. <laughs> Um, I, just, I just want people to, you know, I don't, I don't think people literally lose sleep over the things they claim to be against or whatever, you know, and this, like, like the hate they show, um, mm -hmm. let people live their lives and worry about your own happiness, you know, uh, don't, don't go out of your way to ruin somebody else's, that little girl had every right to be in that classroom, and uh, I, I love the fact that the president himself uh, took the time to do that. That that means a lot. That shows a yeah, lot. That's what a leader, a real leader, should do. I mean, that's beautiful. Like lead by example. This is how I want people. This not. This is not how I want. This is how people should be treated. And I'm going to show everybody on the highest level that this is how people should be treated yeah. under the most biggest microscope, you know, in the world or whatever. Um, here's another headline. This is not as uplifting, but it's kind of funny. Uh. Oh, but Mar Did you know that Martha Stewart actually dated Anthony Hopkins for a little while? Were you aware of that? No. I, I wasn't either until I actually researched this story. Apparently, Martha Stewart, the homemaker, television mogul, tax cheat, freaking stock swindler, Martha Stewart of Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart cooking show fame, dated Anthony Hopkins. I should have known this because that one episode where she was preparing farva beans and a nice Chianti... Uh, was, was she actually doing that? Yeah, you know, that was... No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> tonight, you know, tonight. Yeah, tonight I'll be preparing Bob. <laughs> tonight I'll be preparing my stagehand here, or my producer, Stephen. Um, good with some Barbara beans. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have leg of Bob. <laughs> Um, no, she Sorry, dated some bombs. Uh, she dated Anthony Hopkins, and apparently she broke up with him. And this is a direct quote. I'm gonna hold hold on here. All she could picture was him eating. Well, you know, dot dot dot. Because apparently she had this cabin. Hold on, let me let me look with my handwriting. My handwriting is horrible. She couldn't st- she couldn't separate him from Hannibal Lecter. She had a big uh, scary house in Maine. That's way off by itself on a hundred acres in the forest. And when she just could not imagine bringing him out there, all she could envision was him as Hannibal Lecter. She's dating him. She, they were together. So like every time it was his turn to reciprocate some uh, downtown play, she was worried that it would become literal. I don't think, no, I don't think, I just think that, I think this speaks volumes of Anthony Hopkins as an actor. He did such a great job with that character that in his real life, he can't even date somebody because they can't separate the character from the, you know, from the actual person. But it, did, had she seen <laughs> Thor yet? Had she <laughs> seen Thor? Did she think he was Odin? That well, ruins my image of Martha Stewart because I thought she was such a badass that when she was in prison that she had at least two or three bitches. You know, like I thought she was running the place, and now she's scared of Anthony Hopkins. It is, it is ruined. It shattered. My image of Martha Stewart just shattered oh, yeah. it. I know. I totally agree with you because, you know, when I think of Martha Stewart, I think of just freaking OG badass, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I just, I just pictured back when she was in jail, she was running that place. Oh, oh, you know she was because she probably, she was famous and she was rich and she's white, okay? So she probably had some privilege in there. I'm sure that she had people under, I'm just saying, okay, the system's broken, I'm just saying, okay? Yeah. So she probably was getting some shit she wasn't supposed to be getting, which is ridiculous. Uh, Every system we have is just because we've accepted it over time. You know, our money system, we just accepted that somebody dug up a shiny rock one day and it's worth money because it's shiny. And this guy has more shiny rocks than this guy has. So, you know, everything, it's, it's broken. It's just... If it, if it wasn't for everybody's acceptance, it would just fall apart. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's well, I, totally broken. I was going to say, I talked to you. I, we, we might have actually even addressed that exact topic on a previous episode. But I just think it's so funny that, like, money, you know, money is man-made or whatever. And literally, it's based on, like, gold and silver and platinum and everything else. Shiny rocks. Um, yeah, shiny rocks. And... All the stuff that you have in your house or what you're wearing, what you eat, all that stuff would still be available to you as a human being if there was no monetary system. You just have to, monetary system. You just have to work out a way that, you know, you'd have to work out a way where you'd create or make things without it's compensation. All, it's all <clears throat> imaginary. There is no monetary system. That's the thing. It's, it, it all goes back to shiny rocks. And this is this is valuable. This isn't. It's it's we're, it's play the whole money system and wealth is playing pretend. You know, we They're could be doing bargaining. A good job. They are because everybody's on board with it. But think about that. It's going to break your mind. But there's yeah, hey, our financial system is just make believe. It's monopoly speaking money. Speaking of playing pretend, I saw this awesome video of this little kid. His dad got him a cooking set. And they put some like really good music like uh, to behind him while he's pretending to cook. And he's like flipping eggs and he's pretending to pour stuff and he's just having a blast, man. I wish I could have that much fun doing anything in my life at this point. This kid was just making an imaginary feast and I would have loved to have been invited to that meal. Just having if a blast. I could, if I could go back in time to like my 13, 14 year old self. I just slap the shit out of myself and say, be a kid, you know, enjoy it. Oh, yeah, dude. So fast. I wanted to, I wanted a beard so bad. I wanted a goatee so bad because this one girl was like, I like facial hair. And I was like, oh man, if she likes facial hair, then I need to have facial hair because she'll like me. So I remember shaving up because there was that old wives tale that if you shaved up against the grain, it would grow faster and all this other crap. All it did was slice the living hell out of my face. I'd, I, lo- I had little pieces of toilet paper all over my face. 
I was bringing like, like a, 40, 37, 38, and he still can't grow a mustache. You're getting there, though. <laughs> I can grow a goatee, but I can't grow the, the top part. Dude, I don't have a mustache or the rest of my beard anymore because it's just gray. I look like Old Man River, dude. Like all this right here? Yeah, but you you still got some color, man. You're, you're And your hair's just long and lethal. You're looking great, son. Look at that. Streamline, aerodynamic. You're just living the best life you possibly can. Uh, let's get into the... Huh? Oh, I was pretty much setting up what you were setting up. What, what, what's, our, what's our next headline? This is the last headline of the, of the episode. This is the last story of the night. <clears throat> oh, shit. Okay. That hour and, hour and ten minutes has just flown by. Hour and 17. Yeah. All right, last story of the night, man. Uh, save the best for last. An OnlyFans creator with two vaginas says she uses one for work and the other one for personal life. Evelyn, they just, just has her name Evelyn, was born with two vaginas two completely independent uh, reproductive systems. Uh, before she was uh, doing OnlyFans and stuff, she was a high-class independent escort for eight years. She used one vagina, one vagina for work and saved one for, you know, her boyfriend. And she says, I don't think that it counts as cheating. What's your opinion on this? Do you think that if she... Like, like, if she went out on her boyfriend, like, left him at home, went out, Hooked up with somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they went. They used not his vagina. Yeah. Would that would that be cheating? I don't know. It is cheating because she she set the she set the bar right there. She says it herself. She's like, I use one for work and one for pleasure. Um, but if does the boyfriend is he okay with this or does he think this is just bullshit? Like, what's the deal there? He's just going along for the ride. How much money is she making? Is she just Paying for everything for him to go along for the ride with this? See the dumbest man. Ever? It would make a a, a two M one F uh, threesome a lot easier. How? I would think. You both there. I don't think there's two but, separate entrance. Like I don't. I think you have to enter the same area to get to the the two. I I think they're both under the hood there, but I don't think there's two hoods. Okay. okay, so she's not extra, like, wide and... Uh, no, gotcha. she just looks like a normal gal. Uh, okay. okay, okay. But what happens if... I mean, you're playing with fire there. That's awful close to cheating every time you're you're, you're doing business. Because if the guy's not focused on what he's doing, you know, oops, and all of a sudden you cheated. Now you're a dirtbag. The whole system. The whole system falls apart. It's, dude, it's... It, you're, you're walking a mighty fine line there with cheating and not cheating. And... I don't know if I'd be okay with that. Would you be okay with that? No, that that system would be so broke that a popcorn yeah. fart can save it. Yeah, and on that note, man, I think we better end the show. <laughs> That's the end of the show. Bye bye. <laughs> three three potatoes boiled. <laughs> um, uh, it, that's how long the episode was. First, hey, fifth person to comment on this episode on YouTube. Josh will personally send you a mason jar full of his farts from tonight's episode. Uh, you have to pay the shipping and handling, though. Yes. So, fifth person handling, to comment. Fifth person to comment gets it. Yep. Uh, number five. Farts. Shouldn't it be number two? You know what? It's going to be number two gets a number two. How about that? Okay, All go. right. Number two gets Alex's uh, number two. All right. Uh, this has been Slash Tracks News Episode 3. We hope that uh, you learned something tonight. This news is very important. you got to stay up to date on current events. you got to. And there's no other news, news place to turn to that's going to be as straight with you and as honest with you as Slash Tracks News. No, we're not, we're not being paid off by Big Pharma, Big Anything, uh, except for maybe Big Potato and Big fart jar yeah it's uh yeah. only fans yeah yeah uh th- two vagina people uh there's no josh i couldn't agree more there's no other place there's no other news show in the world that you can get two vagina stories martha stewart anthony hopkins dating stories uh stories about farts and mason jars stories about athletes stories about stone cold making his big return freddie D- Freddy VHS tapes selling for $6,000. Anything yeah, important going on in the world, we got it. 
t- name us one other podcast or news news station out there that that covers the important shit like we do. Nowhere. 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 Only on Slash Tracks News. That's we'll right. see you with episode four very soon. Say good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Good night, everybody. Mahalo.